for this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have Cassandra. And Cassandra has been reading an article on shoulder mobility after a bout of adhesive capsulitis. In graph form, the article shows 70% of subjects falling below the established mean. Now, which of the following is the most accurate representation of the graph? So we got A, negatively skewed bell curve, B, normalized distribution, C, right skewed bell curve, and D, sampling error. Now, on the MPTE, if you don't know this, research doesn't really count for very much, maybe like three to four of the questions, but sometimes it kind of comes down to the wire, right? Those questions could be make you or break you. When it comes down to the MPTE though, and you're looking at research, I would say bell curve is one of those things that you really need to understand well. There's a bunch of questions that's, that can come from there and it's a pretty hot target. So let's go ahead and knock this one down. Again, we have Cassandra has been reading an article on shoulder mobility after a bout of adhesive capsulitis. Now I'll stop there. Adhesive capsulitis, frozen shoulder. We know that that condition has a lot of shoulder mobility restrictions, mostly due to the capsule itself being bound down. A lot of restrictions there, right? Uh, but here's the deal. Does that really make a difference for this specific question? I don't think so. I mean, the first sentence is pretty straightforward. Let's continue to move down. It says, in graph form, the article shows 70% of the subjects following, uh, falling below the established mean value. And that's where we need to slow up, especially for those of y'all on the podcast right now, driving, y'all on the treadmill. Hold on now. Hold on. You got to make sure that you understand this point because it's going to be really important when we start looking at the answer choices. I'll read it again. It says, in graph form, the article shows... 70% of the subjects falling below the established mean value. And we know that the mean is the average, right? And if you know from PT school, that bell curve, I'm sure you've seen it a hundred times, where was the mean falling on that bell curve? Was it falling all the way to the right, all the way to the left, you know, somewhere in the middle, where was it? You should be saying right down the freaking middle where 50% of the population was, um, you know, uh, uh, before it, or, or, or higher than it, and 50% uh, of the population was less than the mean. So it, it gave you the mean right down the center, right? And that's called a normal, normally distributed bell curve. Okay, I'll go ahead and draw that out. For those of you who um, are on the podcast that actually need a drawing, uh, you definitely want to check me out on YouTube. You can check that out, all right? So we now have this part of it that says in graph form, the article shows 70% of the subjects falling below the established mean. So I know that I'm not just looking at a regular bell curve right now. All right. Now the final sentence of the question says, which of the following is the most accurate representation of the graph? So for those of you on the podcast, let me go through these answer choices again. We got a negatively skewed bell curve, B normalized distribution, C right skewed bell curve, and D is sampling error. Let's break these down one by one. I already told you before we even jump in this that it doesn't sound like it's a normalized distribution because 50% of the population would be higher than the mean, 50% would be lower, right? Let's look at A. A says negatively skewed bell curve. Now, before we look at this answer, you need to know what skewed is. Not everybody has an understanding of that. So a, a skewed bell curve is when it's asymmetrical. It doesn't look like the normally distributed one. It's where the population, the majority of the population either falls above or below the mean. That creates a skewed bell curve. So it's like where the, you know, the hump of the bell curve, it's like it being shifted to the left or to the right. That's what a skew is. Make sense? All right. So A says negatively skewed bell curve. And I'll tell you right now, a negatively skewed bell curve is also known as a left skewed bell curve. All right. How do you remember that? I'll tell you that in a little bit. All right. But right now, that's what we're talking about. Now, by definition, and you may want to write this down, a negatively skewed bell curve is really when the majority of the population is gonna fall above the mean. Not below it, the majority of the population is gonna fall above the mean. So let me look at the question again. 
It says, in graph form, the article shows 70% of the subjects falling below the mean. All right, so this can't be the right answer. It's the exact opposite of what we would want. Does that make sense? And for, for those of you who are able to look at my Pablo Picasso drawing right now, I'll go ahead and draw that out for you. It looks like this right here. And I apologize for those of you on the podcast right now. Check me out on YouTube. All right, so we'll go ahead and denote that the negative skew. Let's look at B. B says normalized distribution. All right, normalized distribution, again, that's the one we see in PT school a lot, the traditional bell curve. It looks really nice, really pretty. Mean, median, mode right on top of each other, right down the middle. Is that what's going on in this question? Absolutely not. All right, so let's go ahead and get rid of B. Let's look at C. C says a right skewed bell curve. All right. So a right skewed bell curve is also known as a positive skewed bell curve, okay? And so this one is going to be where the majority of the population that was studied falls below the mean. And again, in the question, it says, in graph form, the article shows 70% of the subjects, which is the majority, falling below the established mean. Bingo, baby. That's exactly what it is that we are looking for. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, just by definition, that makes a lot of sense. And again, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and kind of show you what that looks like. If I can, boom, boom. All right. So now we have a likely answer here. We always have to make sure we look at everything. All right. So let's go down to D. D says sampling error. And I, you know what? I don't like sampling error as the answer. And the reason why is what does that have to do with anything? I mean, we really weren't given any information in this question to, for us to believe that there was some type of sampling error. And so typically when we're talking about sampling errors, we're talking about how the researcher may have gotten a sample of the population that's just not representative of the population. One of the major types of sampling error is called selection error. And that's like when you um, have the participants actually select whether or not they're actually going to participate, right? So if you're like doing a survey or something like that, and you know, if you're outside Walmart or something like that, and you're going to the store and you just want to get home and somebody walks up to you like, hey, I got a little survey for you. Would you like to fill out my survey? And you're like, no, I got, no, I'm, I'm good. And you walk and you get in your car and leave, right? So you decided not to participate, but there are going to be some people that will be like, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. Right. And so that can create what we call a selection sampling error. And that some of the people are, you know, that actually fill out that survey, they may not be actually representative of the entire population. There are only a certain group of people that would actually have done that. Does it make sense? That would create a potential selection error. Again, I look up at the question. I don't see nothing in here about selection error or sampling error or anything to make me think that that's the right answer. I'm going to go ahead and nix that answer, leaving us with our final answer of C, right skewed bell curve, baby. That's it. <laughs> All right, so I, I want to take you to this next level, though, and I know that this particular question was a lot of just like visual stuff. You have to see it. I understand that. Um, I will tell you, if you're on the podcast, you're here with me li live right now, there is a technique that you can use to help you out a lot. All right. And it's actually what they call like a foot sign or foot technique, and it's where you can look down at your feet. And it allows you to really tell like what a right skew or a left skew looks like. And it's where you look down at your feet and just think about your right foot right now. Socks off, right bare foot right now. And if you look at it, it's like your big toe is, is, is you know, further forward than the rest of them majority of the time, right? And as you trickle on down to your, your pinky toe, your fourth and your fifth digit, you see how the foot actually starts to become lower. Well, that's exactly how a right skewed bell curve looks. The majority of the population is on that one side. And as you get further out to the right, 
it's like there's not many people out there. And it and if you look at your right foot, it kind of does it. It kind of has like the little slope downward. And for those of you here live with me right now, you can actually see that in the green here. You see how this would be your big toe up top here. And as we moved out to your fourth and your fifth digits, look at your foot. It would do like this down sloping action. They call it a foot technique. Now, listen, if you are like, what the heck are you talking about right now? I don't see it. Don't worry. That's the reason why I made a cheat sheet for this that actually explains it all. It has some pretty feet on there. Not just me drawing it, some pretty feet.